Hey, what's going on guys? This is going to be my out-of-box review here for the Premium Bandai Master Grade Cubelay Dams. And this was a pretty fun kit to build, although I will say for those of you guys who did try to watch the live stream of this over on Twitch, sorry that I had to cut the stream short while I was in the middle of building this over there on Twitch. Both of my kids woke up and were crying and it was just a big mess and I just couldn't finish the stream at that time. So I just finished the building the rest later off camera. So sorry about that, but it was a really cool kit to build. It's my first time ever building a Master Grade Cubelay, so I, it was an interesting experience. I could see where, uh, I mean, obviously a lot of the kit is based off of the original old kit where it's, it's pretty old, but honestly it still felt uh, pretty fun to build because it's just a really unique design and everything. So everything still goes together uh, in a really interesting and unique way. So it's definitely different from building any sort of your average um, Master Grade Gundam model kit. So in that way, it was really fun to build. The new parts are also pretty nice and I think work together overall pretty well with the old parts, but I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, let's just get into it. And as always, guys, just a huge thank you to SA Gundam Store for sponsoring the review. If you want to check out any premium Bandai stuff that you're interested in pre-ordering or anything like that, of course, you can check the link to their site there down below and uh, use that coupon code there, Zaku Earliest 10 to save 10%. So uh, let's get into the very few accessories that this kit has first off. So first up, you do get this nice set of waterside decals, basically just the one big logo there, and then a whole bunch of just little caution markings, things like that, generic stuff in uh, black, white, and a little bit of yellow. And then we've got our two clear pink beam saber effect parts. And that is it for all the accessories for this. Nothing else for this, except we do have some leftover parts. For example, if you weren't a fan of the high heels of this guy, you do have the parts to make the original feet, so this would be the part for the main bottom of the foot uh, without the extension part sticking down and this is for the main front without it being at an angle like that. You also have these original kind of vent looking parts for in the wing binder areas here. If you didn't like these new ones for whatever reason, you do have the original ones, you can use those if you'd like. You have the original front and back skirt armor if for whatever reason you didn't like. Again, the new design of the new ones being a little bit more detailed, a little bit more shapely. These ones are a little bit more kind of simple and basic if you did prefer those. And the same thing goes for the head as well. The internal parts are the same, but the external parts are different in this case. So uh, if you prefer just the original head, which is again, just a little bit more simple, then you can use that one if you'd like. Now let's go in for a closer look here and talk about some articulation. Now, first off, the only foil sticker that we have for this is for the eyes. It's one sticker that wraps around the front there for the eyes and that is it. It looks fine on here. The cockpit hatch is really cool on this, how it opens up. You lift up this part here and then this little inner door inside there, which is gonna be kind of hard to see because it's black but you fold that down and then you can see inside the cockpit in there, which is pretty cool, but there's no pilot figure included with this. So unfortunately no uh, seated Haman Khan uh, figure that you can put inside there or any sort of new pilot just because of the uh, being from Build Divers, it doesn't have a pilot actually sitting inside there. So there you go. So the head is just on a ball joint so that can just move around a little bit, but then the neck actually pulls up like that so you can have that fully extended up like that, which would be really cool for doing some sort of flying poses. The only thing is that you are going to be limited as for left and the right, you're only gonna be able to look over to the left or the right so far with this one. In the torso section, you do have a ball joint up inside there so you can sort of move that back and forth a little tiny bit, but really not all that much. Basically, you can just rotate there at the waist. Each of the four wings are just on a ball joint and a kind of extended arm up inside of there that you can kind of move those around and place those in a lot of different poses to make those look really nice and up inside of there again some nice detail but in these like older master grades the detail like that is i just feel like it's kind of soft in a word is that there's not a lot of like really sharp detail in there like it's there's something but it's not really all that detailed really the shoulder where it plugs into the torso there is basically just on a ball joint, so you can just move that around a little bit, not really all that much. Uh, ultimately, vertically, you can only get the arms up to about there, about 90 degrees, which is not all that much, but again, for an older Master Grade, it's not really all that surprising. As for the arm, you're going to be able to rotate. It actually rotates up here and also down here, so it's kind of weird. The bicep can rotate separately from the forearm. Also, I'm finding the forearm does come disattached here a little bit easily. This ball joint up inside of there uh, comes out of this polycap kind of easily there in the forearm. But when you bend that, you can get just about a 90 degree bend there at the elbow. So not all that much, but considering the, the shape of everything, it's about what you'd expect really, to be honest. We'll come back to the hands in a moment, but at the wrist, that's just on a ball joint. So again, you can just move that around a little bit and rotate that. And again, the forearm falling off. As for the back skirt or backpack, kind of rather as it is plugged into the back of the torso, that will just move up and down like so. And up underneath, you've got your 10 funnels all plugged onto little uh, polycaps inside there, actually. So those can kind of move around a little bit uh, while they're plugged in, but basically the polycaps there just to hold them in tightly. 
The front skirt piece will move up and down like that. You can sort of rotate it a little bit side to side there as well, but not really all that much. You have this new extended dong piece up underneath, which doesn't really serve any purpose. It just kind of clips onto the original part underneath there. It's just kind of an added mechanical looking part up underneath the front skirt. Doesn't really do anything, but it's just there. These side skirt parts will move up and down like that. And the legs are just on polycap ball joints, so they're not really going to be able to move too wide, only to about there and then you can only move them forward to maybe about like that. So not even up to 90 degrees, but that's just basically because of the side skirt, not because of the actual joint there. But it is pretty nice to see all the detail up underneath the feet, up underneath the side of the leg there, and even up underneath the knee has some nice detail up under that part as well. So we do have a double joint here for the knee. When you bend that, you, you get it to bend uh, more than 90 degrees, so it's not too bad of a knee bend there. The kneecap can move kind of a little bit up and down on its own there like that, that pointed part. At the ankles, you can move the feet side to side a little bit like that, which is not too bad. The foot itself will move forward and back like that pretty well. And then you can actually point the toe farther down like that, which is pretty good. Another piece that I do find that falls off very easily though is this part here, which goes onto this little ball joint there on the top of the foot. This is a new part and doesn't really want to stay on there very well. When the kid is just standing like that, it's on there fine. But when you're moving the foot around and things like that, it can just fall off there really easily. It just doesn't want to stay on there. Okay, and then let's talk about the new hands because these have been a major point of contention for a lot of people for this kit. Now, the first thing is that, let's just talk about seam lines. The thumb here is a seam line down the top of the thumb like that that you will have to remove. On the fingers though, the seam line goes like between here, this top and the bottom. So the seam line is hidden as an actual panel line just kind of between the armor there on the fingers. So that's good. You only really only have to worry about the seam on the thumbs. But as for the articulation of them, they only have a ball joint at the base. So the thumb only has a ball joint there and each finger is only able to bend there at the base knuckle, which is pretty disappointing. I think a lot of people were disappointed about that. Honestly, I was not surprised by that. That's what I was expecting just based on the images. That said, uh, thanks to someone who pointed this out in the unboxing video, there is a solution that Bandai did put into here secretly, and it's not even mentioned in the manual, unfortunately, but if you take the finger and open it up, you'll notice that in here, there are little like spaces for ball joints kind of molded into the inside of the finger. Now, if that looks familiar for you, that is because the parts that you need to make this articulated are here in the Balden Arm Arms set. So this is either the HD Build Custom Balden Arm Arms, and I think the No Name Rifle also comes with these joint parts for these ball and socket joints, like this would be the A1. So you take this part like here, put that inside here. Well, you have to cut this first. So what you have to do is you have to cut here between each knuckle, here and here, cut those apart, and then you can put this piece up inside of there like that, and there you go. You'll have, I think, probably not a whole lot of added articulation, but you'll have a little bit more articulation into each individual finger joint, and so that is pretty cool. So, not going to demonstrate that in this particular video, but I'm planning to do a video in the next week or so where I'll actually go through and add all the articulation into one of the hands so that you guys can see what that actually looks like. So I'll cover that um, more fully in a separate video, the actual process of doing that, but just wanted to let you guys know in the review that that uh, exists, that's possible. And so that's pretty awesome that someone, uh, I guess some Japanese modeler discovered that. I mean, when you look at the parts, it seems like, oh yeah, that's why there's that detail. Otherwise the detail molded inside of the fingers seemed kind of weird and unnecessary, but if you, think about it. So I'm not sure if Bandai did ever announce that in any sort of official way, like putting that on their website or something like that, maybe on the website, the premium Bandai website for this. I know a lot of people were worried about the fingers, so hopefully that uh, does calm a lot of the worries about this kit. So let's talk about uh, putting this up in poses. Now the problem with that is going to be that there's no action base connector for this, so you'll have to just use like the fork action base that will just plug up onto around the hip section there. So let's give it a try, see how stable it is. I should also point out that where the beam sabers are, where you're gonna plug in the beam saber effect parts is here in the forearm. You actually will remove this kind of like key part here and then your beam saber is just there stuck in the forearm. You just stick the beam effect part just up into that and then it's not really all that tight. You can set, kind of set that out at a little bit of an angle like that, but if you move it around too much, it's just gonna fall out of there really easily. There's nothing really too securely holding the beam saber in there. So yeah, as usual, the uh, fork action base connector is a little bit of a balancing act, especially for a big kit like this. And this kit is pretty big. I haven't mentioned that yet, but it's it's quite uh, large of a master grade for sure. I'll give you guys a size comparison here in a moment, but I was definitely a little bit surprised about that too. I mean, I knew the cubelet was big, but it's always interesting building a nice big master grade like this. And 
Yeah, so getting up on an action base is going to be a little bit tricky, but then again, you are limited by the articulation as well. So whether it be the weight of the kit or just the limitations of the articulation, you're not really going to be able to do, be able to do anything like too super dynamic with it either way. So it's not really too big of a deal, I feel like, because probably you're just going to have it in a relatively simple pose anyway. So whether you have it on an action base or just standing there, uh, it's going to be looking just cool, just kind of as it is. This is definitely kind of a more stylized version of an already very stylized mobile suit. So it's just kind of there for the style. It's not really there for the actual substance of being able to do some really cool, super crazy stuff. If you want that, then I would definitely recommend getting the HGUC Revive version of the Cubelet. And so as for negatives of the kit, obviously the articulation is pretty weak overall. Uh, there are some seam lines here and there as well. Of course, those are going to be mostly on the old parts for the kit, which is still a lot of the main body of the kit is still all the original parts. And so there's some seam lines here and there that you will have to take care of. Uh, but the other thing that I want to talk about is just the overall aesthetic of the armor because all the original parts, very not detailed, all the new parts much more detailed. So there is going to be a big discrepancy between old and new armor parts in here. Now, obviously, if you leave the kit unpainted like this and it's just all white and unpaneled, you're not really going to notice all that all that much when it's just up on the shelf. But if you have this actually painted, especially if you're going to paint this in a color other than white and do all the panel lining and everything, bring out all the details, it's going to be pretty noticeable. They have like huge parts like the lower legs and obviously the big shoulder uh, wing binders there completely lacking in almost any detail, and then you have parts like the front skirt, the head, the forearms, the back skirt, all really detailed. It's going to look a bit weird, but on the other hand, I think that it almost kind of works in a way that it almost looks like it's meant to have kind of a lot of details in some areas and a lot less in other areas. Uh, so I don't know if that just, if that makes sense, but I think it does kind of maybe look like it is intentional in a way but it just kind of depends on you so if that's something that you think is going to bother you about the kit then that might be something you might want to consider but personally it doesn't really bother me all that much i think the kit still does have a such a really cool unique look uh the the fact that there is going to be such big discrepancies amongst the details is not really all that big of a deal in my personal opinion but it's up to you all right so real quick here is that size comparison next to the mash grade stormbringer and as you can tell the cubelet is pretty big. It's pretty tall, pretty wide, so it's going to take up a lot of shelf space, I think, but it's definitely going to also demand a lot of attention, I think, up on the shelf. So, And so, in conclusion, I feel like this is probably going to be right up there with the original cubelet, where you either love it or you hate it, and I feel like the original cubelet is such a weird design, it's pretty polarizing, and this is pretty much the exact same thing. If you love the cubelet, then I think you'd probably like this. If you didn't like the Cubelet, then there's probably not a chance that you're really going to be all that interested in this. I don't know if the new redesigned parts are really going to change your mind all that much, but I don't know. I think they are pretty interesting. Obviously, the biggest feature is those huge giant hands that it now has, and so it's pretty interesting, pretty unique. But I hope the review has been helpful for you to help make up your mind whether you do want to pick up the kit for yourself or not. There's a lot to like. I think it's a really cool design, but there's also not really a whole lot that you can really do with it. It's just basically a stylistic design. And uh, yeah, and I hope the little tip about the fingers was, was helpful. Like I said, I will do a, another video uh, showing the process of modding those fingers. Uh, and I think that it's, that'll be a pretty cool thing that you can do with that to help free up the articulation on the hands and add a little bit more articulation in the hands, really not going to change the kit all that drastically, but it should be pretty cool. So we'll take a look at that in the video coming up in the next week or so. And if you guys have any other further questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave those down below. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. Remember, if you want to check the kit out for yourself, you can head over to USA Gundam store. Use that coupon code, Zakuarelius10. Save yourself 10%. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.